I must be about my father's business. Jesus speaks these words when he is 12 years old to his mother, the Virgin Mary, and to his legal father, though not his biological father, Joseph, when they find him in the temple in Jerusalem after he had left their traveling party, making their way back from Jerusalem to the village of Nazareth. Jesus is speaking of his own mission. And yet he also speaks this of the mission of his church yet today. Mary and Joseph did not understand the words that Jesus spoke. Of course, he was speaking of a business that he would be conducting throughout his life that wouldn't become clear until his death on the cross on Good Friday and his triumphant resurrection from the tomb on Easter morning. His mission was to accomplish salvation from sin and death and hell for sinners, for those in need of forgiveness and salvation and life. What then is the business of the church today? Is it as some seem to suggest about providing fire insurance, that is to say, to prevent people who do not live rightly, who do not live a good life from burning in the fires of hell? Is the business of the church to provide a place for fellowship between Christians and perhaps others like a social club? Is the business of the church to create a place where one can come and learn the lessons of the great teacher Jesus and to live more like him? Is the business of the church to be focused on pleasing God through worship and praise? Some churches focus on one aspect of among those mentioned. But the business of the church truly is the same business as the Lord of the church. It is all of those put together. But also with the recognition that the church herself is a divine creation instituted by God blessed by God and the business of the church is to be about our father's business and that is a forgiveness of salvation and of new life. The business of the church is to bring into her midst sinners, to come just as they are, but not to leave them there. The business of the church is to proclaim the law of God in its full ferocity 
against sin and sinner. Against all. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we all transgress his commandments. No one of us loves the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind as we ought. For we are fallen in body, in mind, in heart, steeped in sin, broken people, living in the midst of the circumstances of a broken world that brings the consequences of other sins upon us too. It's the business of the church to proclaim that no one, no one is worthy in himself or herself. It is the business of the church to crush human hearts so that there is left no hope. For anything human to reach to God. For it is only through the gospel brought through the means of grace in the church where God has placed his ministers to distribute his means of grace, to not only proclaim the law in its full ferocity, but to salve wounded consciences with the sweet salve of his gospel, the good news that Jesus has come to do his father's business of saving the world from sin and death and hell. Jesus had come to accomplish all things necessary for our salvation. And the Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit through each of the means of God's grace so that the Spirit of God might convince us of the truth of this gospel, that indeed God has done it all, and that believing only through faith can one reach and grasp the hand of God who places into our hands Forgiveness, salvation, it's assurance. And through that, the Christian lives with the perspective both of life in this fallen world and the better life in the world yet to come. It is the business then of God's church. to preach the gospel that saves from the fires of hell and it is to teach the gospel that binds Christians together in a koinonia, a communion of the saints of God, both in the church on earth and in the Christian church in heaven. The fellowship of all of the saints of God who have been declared holy in God's sight through the gospel. The church is a place where we learn 
the lessons of the great teacher. But a place that also acknowledges that he is more than a teacher. He is the word of God in the flesh. So that the word that is received in the Christian church is unlike any human word because it comes with the very presence of God to deliver that word. With the very Holy Spirit of God writing upon those words to make them true spiritual words. Words of power, words of life. in our worship the highest form of worship is to believe in God through the faith that he himself creates as a divine creature through his word and by his spirit true worship is not the worship of man with human-centered means. True worship of God begins with God, flows through God, and ends in God. That's the business of the church. All of it together. And for this purpose, God has created his church has instituted the office of the holy ministry within the church with those men called to that office to be the servants of the Lord and servants of the Lord's people to serve up his law and his gospel. For the salvation of souls and leading Christians in the proper fellowship as the modern day disciples of Jesus, God in the flesh, and to live like Him through the power of the word of forgiveness that he first speaks so that his Holy Spirit can enliven those men and women and children in which that spirit dwells. And that spirit creates faith through the means of grace, holy baptism, the holy absolution, the declaration of the forgiveness of sins by God's free grace for the sake of Christ Jesus to all who believe. And in that faith, we continue to hold out our hands, trusting in this God to fill us with all that we need, in body and in soul, for now and forever. This is our Father's business.